What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, your home for all things Amazon advertising. Whoa. Advertising tips, <laughs> tricks, and strategy. Uh, we're off to a great start here. Uh, to David, how are you doing? David Koshpasand from Tenuity. David, it's great to have gotten to know you over the last few weeks, and I'm really excited to have you on the show today. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Big fan of the show. I listen to it all the time, so it's an honor to be here today. Thank you. Do you ever, uh, is that a a crib behind you? That is a crib. That's my son's crib. Um, He's been in it only a handful of times because he ended up sleeping in our bed. But, uh, but yeah, my, my office is also integrated with his room. Yes. Number one, congratulations. Number two, what does your son think of the show? Is there any other topics that he, uh, he'd like us to, to hit? You know, he did mention the other day about how he wished new to brand metrics would come to sponsor products. So yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if uh, Amazon will listen to Liam in that regard. Yes. Amazon, I hope you're listening. We've got a request by uh, how old is Liam? <laughs> He's almost two. So almost two. Is- you got to get the requests in early. You know, this is a new, fresh perspective that Liam's providing for sure. But David, you've never been on the show before, and I'd love to just introduce you to our audience. So what has been your journey into Amazon marketing? Uh, t- tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I actually was introduced to Amazon around 2017. Um, an old business coach contacted me, let me know that he had invented a game, joined the ride. It exploded, ended up being Amazon's number one bestseller for in the games category. Wow. Um, we ended up, you know, Hasbro was our lead competitor and being ahead of the curve in terms of pioneering um, Amazon advertising, from 2017, we got a lot more exposure and consideration and sales from that. And just, you know, working through Amazon over the course of four years um, with that company, you know, managing Vendor Central, AMS, obviously, Lightning Deals, promotions, direct imports, all that good stuff. And then discovered Tenuity uh, a year ago. Loved the, loved the culture, loved everything that they were conveying, and definitely wanted to accelerate my learning curve. So joined an agency that been phenomenal and uh this past year i feel like my my learning curve has just exploded so um certainly happy there yeah that's awesome um so i mean number one you mentioned that launched a game in 2017 and used amazon advertising uh, almost like as a david and goliath like hasbro is a gigantic company do you still think that's true do you still think ppc can be a way that you know these davids can fight back against these goliaths yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the the model from 2017 can still work where it's just like, hey, I launch on Kickstarter. You know, I, I tried to see if this is a viable product that has, you know, potential. And if it does, how can I, you know, take the next step to Amazon and really, you know, maximize exposure? And you do, you know, have the ability to have a competitive advantage over, you know, big companies, you know, because if, if you're able to be relevant and customers like your product and you can win the bid and you can get good placement, you know, invest. Yeah, exactly. You know, if I had to guess, a lot of people that listen to the show and like learn new techniques like we're going to be talking about today, what I think is so cool is that it allows you to like move faster than maybe companies that don't have this kind of like, let's learn, 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 learn and execute and try new things uh, strategy. Talk to a lot of people at, you know, large companies where they're like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to do this, but like nobody wants to do it at the company and like, it'd be awesome to try these new things. So for sure like moving fast is is an advantage for all the all the davids out there for sure and then yeah you know tenuity is a company that i think almost everyone uh has heard of for sure i I think it's it's one of the models for like what a large agency looks like so um awesome to hear that things are going well over there shout out to tenuity yeah absolutely yeah so today I i loved this topic we were going back and forth about what kinds of things you've been up to and what kinds of things you've been testing. And I really liked what we teased out here, uh, which is, if I could summarize it for the listener before we get into it, it's a new, it, it's a framework that I don't think we've talked about uh, on this show before. Uh, I think it also answers some some common questions that I get from people. So it's a way to use phrase match as a research tool and we're going to walk through how to do it. And what I think, I think the biggest takeaway here is, is just like, we'll break down how to do it, why to do it, 
as well as some perspectives on it that I think will be really helpful for people to be aware of. So it's possible that some people are doing this without thinking about it. It's possible that people are not doing it. And I think it's important to do it. And I think it's important to be aware of the mechanism of why you would do it. So we're going to get into all of this today. Uh, And with that said, let's jump into using your phrase match as a research tool and get into this test that you've run over the last month. All right, David, so walk us through uh, like the layout of this test, like how did it get started and, and sort of what were you hoping to accomplish where, as we get into what the technique is, like what problem did you have going into this? Like what was the setup here? Sure. So when we're thinking about, you know, keyword research, and we're putting it into our campaign, we have a mix of short tail keywords. We expand on those. We graduate them to exact match. But all those keywords that are placed within them, are they getting maximum budget coverage? You know, when we, we, we talked about the budgets tab that's on Amazon, that was a new feature and it, in it, it talks about the estimated missed sales opportunity. Well, think about into the future, how can we mitigate that estimated missed sales opportunity? And we can do that by isolating certain keywords and maximizing budget allocation towards that keyword. And that's really the, but the, the problem that we're trying to solve here is it's like, okay, if we start to analyze data and we're understanding that some core keywords here are producing sales, how can we expand incremental sales by gathering more long tail keywords like that? And in, in order to accomplish that, we need budget allocation specifically towards that keyword. I think it's another, you know, pro in the benefit of single keyword campaigns in the sense of, you know, I sh- also shout out to the new budgets tab. If you haven't used it, it's awesome. Uh, we've talked about it on the show before, but a lot of times when I'm evaluating an account for the first time, I'll go to the budgets tab and I'll be able to like point out like, Hey, look how much missed opportunity you have for this particular campaign. And it never occurred to me of like, Hey, if you have a single keyword campaign, you could now estimate like budget limitations and how much you're missing out on a per keyword basis. And when you think of that as an exact match, and then you think of it as like a phrase match, now all of a sudden you're getting into like a grander scheme of like overall like network effects of like, hey, this phrase keyword, you're missing out on a lot of terms related to it, which I think is a really interesting concept here. So let's walk through this process here. So the goal of what we're trying to do is we're trying to plant a seed to find related terms to something that has converted previously. And for the listener, like we've talked about the concept of like death by a thousand cuts before, where you might have 5,000 individual search terms, which are all getting like one or two clicks. So now you have 5,000 search terms getting like two clicks, that's 10,000 clicks, but each individual one gets such little traffic that it's difficult to make decisions on them. And when we talked about death by a thousand cuts, we were talking about terms that you wanna find new phrase match negatives. So what that process looked like was you would take those 5,000 terms, you would put those in a keyword density analyzer to find like the one or two word phrases. So like if I have dog bowl, that got two clicks, no orders. And then I have dog shoes, that got two clicks, no orders. And then dog bed, two clicks, no orders. And I multiply this by 5,000, I put that in a keyword density analyzer and I would find the word dog as a great negative phrase to add because every time dog appears with other terms, it's not converting. So I'm typing in dog as a negative phrase to help me not have death by a thousand cuts to find these new negative phrases. In this episode, we're talking about flipping that. So we start with a search term report. We grab that search term report. We find the converting terms and then put that into a keyword density analyzer. So like, do you have any examples? Uh, Cause I know that you ran this test. So like, what did that test look like for you when you took that search term report and put it into a keyword density analyzer? Uh, and also what keyword density analyzer did you use? I think we can give them a shout out. Yeah, so uh, if you go to tools.seobook.com, you can get a, a free keyword density tool um, that's available to use. Um, that's the one I, I use. and. 
So it, and it'll, what the great part about it is it'll actually spit out single keyword, two keyword, and three phrases. So you'll actually get a look at a, at a granular level, level um, for each stage. But yeah, it's completely free. Definitely recommend using it. Yeah, I think this tool is from like 1997, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an oldie but goodie. <laughs> yeah, it is an oldie but goodie. You know what? When I first got into digital marketing uh, and I was doing a lot of SEO, I remember using SEO book and I remember using this density analyzer. And then I stopped using it because I started focusing on PPC a lot. And then when I was doing this keyword density analysis, I was using a spreadsheet, but you just reminded me like I don't need to use a spreadsheet. Like literally you're just copying and pasting all the terms putting it into a text box and then it will just spit out like the one and two word like common things that are popping up. So yeah, shout out to SEO book. Um, not, not affiliated with them, but uh, they have a keyword density analyzer that still seems to work pretty darn well. Absolutely. Are you able to give like, uh, like examples of like what you had, like how many terms did you have that were converting terms you put into a keyword density analyzer, and then like, what is the end result that you got there? Sure, so I had, in the test that I ran, we had five keywords that really made up a bulk at the foundation of all the mm -hmm. sales that we're getting from keywords. So I knew based on- Explain that, <laughs> explain that just in case uh, anyone didn't understand that. Got it, so when we run the, the search term report, you can filter it by saying like, hey, which ones are getting sales? Let's eliminate the ones that aren't getting sales. Then go to the search term column and let's, let's take all of those search terms that we've converted on, place them in the keyword density tool, and then we can see by density, like let's say for instance, whether it's shoes, Mm -hmm. um, that's showing up multiple times in our conversions. Let's say it uh, doubled the percentage than another term. Right. So what I do is look at, okay, what are our key outliers? So what, what keywords that showed up at the core had a very high density? In this case, when I ran the test, there were five particular um, single keyword and two word phrases that showed up you know, at a very high density. So I knew right away, this is the keywords or phrases that we need to expand budget on and to gain some more consideration incremental sales and to gather new long tail keywords. So you're saying that like in this example where shoes appeared in front of you, the converting terms were like men's running shoes, um, men's trail running shoes, shoes for running. So like you had conversions on those things and then you found the word shoes as like being like very dense in your search term report. Is, is that right? Correct. Yep, exactly. Okay. And then you're taking that word shoes Generally, I think what you'll find here is like a lot of one and two word, like short, shorter tail words. And then you turn that into a phrase match in a single keyword campaign. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Precisely the steps. And then when you are doing that, like what kinds of things are you looking for? Because um, now we have a new positive phrase and it's a rather broad term. So generally we think of like shorter tail terms as being, especially shorter tail phrases will capture a lot. Like if you have a five word phrase keyword, you're not going to appear for that many things. Like a five word phrase keyword might be like men's trail running shoes uh, with extra grip. So that's like, you know, a seven word. And if you were to put that as a phrase, you're not gonna get that many associated terms. But if you put like a one or two word phrase in there, what kinds of things are you going to, to get? And then what does the data look like? Like what, what do you appear for? And what are you looking for to, to, to verify if this was a good idea to add this or like a bad idea? How do you verify that? So for me, I really look for the mid to lower funnel type of stats. So I'm looking for consideration. I'm looking at how does our click-through rate look in comparison to our average historical performance? What's, what's the conversion rate? Because you know, often when I ran the test, I actually saw that we had some high conversion rates um, in contrast to our historical average. Also looking at a ROAS performance at the very bottom of the funnel. So running it, really think about that mid funnel to lower funnel type of lens and see, does it fit your business goals? You know, if, if by running this, yes, I'm trying to increase incremental sales, but also have that secondary lens of how does this play out into my consideration stage into that mid funnel? What's a click-through rate look like? Did a new keyword populate 
that you know we should start to not only put an exact match, but we need to start to gather more. And I think that's the purpose of this is because when we go back to our maybe our original keyword research campaigns that we've started to try to graduate, for instance, we might find a keyword that we're like, oh, we the budget allocation towards this is not nearly as much as it could be potentially if we isolate it. And that's what we're doing. We're pulling it into its own campaign, giving it as much budget exposure as possible. So you mentioned a couple of things there that I want to elaborate on. You mentioned like number one, incremental sales. So like if you take the word shoes or like running shoes, positive phrase, you're putting it in there. And the first thing that you're looking for is like, you know, what is the ACOS on this? Uh, how much, how many orders am I getting from this phrase? But then you're also looking for like consideration metrics as well. Uh, tell me about those consideration. What, what exactly are those consideration metrics that you are looking at to determine if this like positive phrase test is working? Yeah, so what I'll look at is what is the click-through rate? Because if we have certain budget allocation towards one campaign, right, if we're looking at clicks alone, if another campaign has more, you know, a higher budget, then we can't look at click-to-clicks. But we can look at the click-through rate to see like, hey, what is the engagement from a customer in terms of interest? So for me, that's how I start to gauge it in terms of the consideration. Um, For the lower funnel aspect of it, I really like to look at the conversion rate. And I know mentioned on to the show uh, before, it's like how important conversion rate is, right? (laughs) When we're trying to analyze, you know, what's working and what's not working. So for me, I, I look at those two things. And then lastly is ROAS. So if if we have a ROAS goal, if we're, you know, trying to grow at a hyper rate, then we're okay with hitting a ROAS of one. And that might not work for everyone. You know, Mm -hmm. other other client goals say, hey, we need a ROAS of six to eight, or we need something much higher. Um, So Mm -hmm. it really comes down to a variety of factors. What's the goal of the overall business? What am I trying to accomplish? But to summarize, I can answer your point. Definitely look at that click-through rate look at the conversion rate, look at the ROAS and see what's working for you. You know, if you, go ahead. Uh, How have you handled conversations with clients or managers um, where the phrase match keyword performs mediocrely, like it performs okay, but then you have really good search terms that were triggered by this phrase that ended up doing well. Like, how have you navigated that conversation? Are you able to explain like, hey, this was a phrase match test, we're looking for new search terms, uh, or have like, how have you bridged that conversation where the, where the keyword is doing a lot different than some of the search terms that it's appearing for? Yeah, I really think it's about being collaborative in the relationship. And once you've built trust, you know, you can say, honestly, this is a test the, the goal in this test is to really figure out how can we increase incremental sales. Mm-hmm. This goal isn't to be a profitable cash cow from the start, right. right? So I think walking your partner through the steps and saying, hey, look, the purpose of this campaign is to do research. Once we've gathered research, we should be able to ascertain and dissect the data of what we can put in exact match and really increase incremental sales. So I think it's about trust, collaborative, and being collaborative and just walking you know, the client or whoever you're working with as a brand um, through the steps so they understand. For sure. One thing we recently started doing at Ad Badger is every week we do reporting and every week there's like a campaign manager diary or campaign manager optimization log where it gives them a chance, a dedicated time to like write down, I'm doing a new test over here. This is what I expect to happen. So that way, as a campaign manager, the more proactive and collaborative you can be to like get ahead of it so that you don't have your client doesn't have these like seeing red moments where they're like what is this new phrase that we're spending so much money on that's not doing well and then you have to explain well you know i'm doing testing you know we're looking for search terms and you don't want to start from behind you don't want to start on your heels you want to be presenting things ahead of time so shout out to all my campaign managers um let's all try to be more proactive uh So is there any component when we were doing our pre-show prep, you also mentioned you'd look at share of voice for these terms. And I think it was such an interesting analysis and probably uh, doing a whole episode on share of voice and how to measure it and what it means is well worth it. But I thought thought this was a really interesting topic because just earlier this week, I was talking to a client and they were saying, hey, 
I do really good on like these hyper specific exact matches, like these multi word exact matches, but they're like, I'm trying to like break up into like higher volume keywords. And I want to like measure like, what is my share of voice? Like how much of this traffic amount am I able to capture for these like bigger, higher traffic terms? Um, so like share of voice is at top of my mind. So like just for those, cause we've never really covered it on the show. Like what does share of voice mean? How do you measure it? And how does that relate to adding a phrase match single keyword campaign in the way that we're doing it? Awesome. I love this question. So at the root of it, it sounded like they really want to plan and set goals. And that's mm-hmm. what, that's what we all need to do, right? Spend more time mm-hmm. planning and setting goals. So there's share of voice. Uh, through the tool we use, we're capturing what's being populated on the first page. And it's broken up into chunks. So we have overall share, we have organic share, which is like your organic rank, and then sponsored share. And that's even broken up into sponsored products and sponsored brands. So when we're thinking about, okay, we talked about click-through rate, we talked about conversion rate and ROAS, What other data can we pull to see if our strategy that we're trying to implement is effective? And one way to do that in a good case study is uh, after I ran a test, when we started to hyper focus on a keyword that was very competitive and had high search volume growth, when looking at that in the first couple of weeks, we went from overall share of less than 1% to 18%. And our organic share went from 1% to 7%. So I think that's a great case study to show that yes, in fact, it's you know, every a lot of advertisers say it, and it's in fact true that your sponsored share investment will have an effect on your organic share and your organic rank. And I can actually see this through the share of voice tool. So instead of speculating about what we think, you know, it's so much more effective for us to be able to prove it and show the data. And this is at the, towards the end, when we're measuring the effectiveness of the future strategy, using that share of voice to say, okay, we're using this this keyword, we're increasing our sponsored investment through sponsor brands and sponsor products. Are we increasing share? Are we uh, overall? And does it have an effect on our organic rank? So I think, you know, adding this, graduation, you know, cause, cause that's kind of what we're doing here. We're looking at search terms and then we're graduating the short tail key search terms as positive phrases. And there's these emergent effects that come from it. One of them being an increase in share of voice, which I think was, thought was really interesting. By the way, how long did you run the test and like what, what budget, like how much ad spend were we talking about for these positive phrases? Yeah. So for me personally, because there were five different, uh, keywords and campaigns, I just did them at a, a $40 daily campaign mm-hmm. Ran that for two weeks during a high traffic time that we we're running. Then stopped, paused, analyzed the data, um, and then started to turn those into exact match campaigns. Um, It's really all dependent on the budgeting for your brand and the client. Yeah, how much was the total budget? If you created five campaigns at $40 a day, like, uh, do you remember approximately how much the total budget per day was? Yeah, so it was around 200 to 250, Um, so in total. To, to go forward. So, you know, I, yeah. I have, I'm doing this test for another client because we want to maximize click share and increase in that category. And for that, I'm just going to do literally one keyword, a hundred dollars a day. So, mm-hmm. um, it's going to vary. It's going to be different, um, for, for every client. But I mean, if you wanted to put this strategy together, I mean, try to do it on a $20 daily. Let me clarify my question. So in the example where you had like about 200, 250 um, for just the phrase match positive tests, what was the overall account budget? So that way that way we can think of like percentage of overall ad, ad spend for these positive phrases. Got it, so for, for that particular case, the monthly budget was between 40 and 60 grand. So we're taking a, a fractional slice and putting it in, in, into testing. Yeah, that'll give people some perspective of like when they're doing this, how much to dedicate. And let's get a little nitty gritty about the specifics of the campaign itself. Like, were you doing, like, how did you think about bidding for these new positive phrases? How did you think about bid settings? How did you think about placement bids? 
uh, play some bid modifiers. How are, we, how are we thinking about those factors? Great question. So uh, through the, the strategy, I did dynamic down, really looking at what is our average CPC historically, you know, across the account. And because I know it's a new campaign, we don't have the relevancy yet, we don't have the history, so I know I'm gonna have to set an aggressive bid, and I wanna set an aggressive bid so I can get as much maximum visibility and exposure as possible. So when setting up the account, I would suggest that, that um, at least to start. I know you mentioned to me about place modifiers. I think that's a great idea for, in this particular case, I did not implement that strategy, but I, I do love that, especially uh, if your intent is to really get top of search, maybe modify and see what happens. I really like doing that test and then looking at placement stats after too, and just seeing like, hey, where did I convert at? And then maybe you know deciding where you wanna place with modifiers there as well. But um, I do like that strategy as well. And, you know, I also want to make a point too. I, 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 get, I get questions from people and, you know, they launch an auto um, or they have like a keyword campaign with, you know, 40, 50 keywords in it. And a lot of times people will ask me like, hey, should I be graduating my search terms to exact match only? How do I do that? And I think what we're introducing here as we begin to sort of summarize the strategy is that it's a way for you to graduate short tail terms into phrase to continue the research process. So I guess the question now that I have for you, I know you mentioned that you ran like a two week test. Why did you only do sh uh, like a two week test? Like, could you theoretically run this forever? Like, could you always have this phrase match? And if you did, when you graduate from the phrase match, would you add the negative exacts to the phrase as you graduate them out of this phrase? So yeah, tell us about like the logistics of like, Two week test, like should you test it in perpetuity? Should you, you know, add it as a negative exact when you move it out? Yeah, great questions. This is something I'm actually looking at now for afterwards when you know doing analysis is should we be doing this, as you mentioned, and you know, as a long term strategy? Because we don't mm -hmm. only want to rely on auto for research. Even when we're doing, you know, those initial product launches, for me personally, I use broad and phrased to to discover those long tail keywords. But I do like the the strategy of a long term play here because if our goal really is to increase mid funnel exposure and consideration and clicks to our product page, as a long term strategy, we're able to accomplish that and then also gathered more of these long tail keywords that we can increase incremental sales on these core, in my case there were five, um, foundational keywords. And with that, would I negate them? Uh, yes. So I know um, this is something everyone as a, uh, PPC managers go back and forth is it's like, are we you know losing out on some like lower bid sales? What I would say in this case is um, let's negate them because the purpose of that campaign is for research. Mm -hmm. So if we've gathered the term and we're you know bidding on it in an exact match, we found it. What else can we find? And that's why we want to negate it. So therefore we, we uh, discover new opportunities. And sometimes people will say, well, my initial, that phrase match research, it's just going to like dwindle down to nothing as I continue to move things out. And it's like, well, yeah, like that's the point. Like we want to like use this as research. And then once we research something and prove that it's worth it, we move it out so that the existing phrase match can go find new things. Like it opens up the opportunity to go and find new things. So I love this. I love episodes where we like get nitty gritty. We walk through a process and talk about something that I think everyone is, you know, intuitively familiar with, but I don't think I've ever seen this like explicitly laid out. So thanks so much for bringing this topic to to Badger Nation so that we could all like sort of level up our keyword research as well as how we think about doing keyword research as well as the keyword density analyzer. Uh, I'll probably do another episode about uh, how to use it for negative keyword research too with the keyword density analyzer. So instead of putting terms that did convert and finding those short tail terms, you bunch in a whole bunch of terms that did not convert and you find a whole bunch of short tail terms that you had as negative phrase. Um, Dave, if you have a few minutes left, do you want to talk about um, you know life as a managing search and like sort of some of the skills that you've learned and just and your sort of your goals as goals for yourself as a campaign manager? Yeah, for sure. Um, two things come to mind is really about first is time management. Right, it's just like mm -hmm. we have so much work to accomplish and so many big goals to really reach and attain. Is this like how can I time my day in this twenty-four hour period? 
to maximize, you know, the, the output. Thinking about quality time invested also in, in, instead of just quantity. So, mm. and then second one is like the big picture. It's just like, where do I want to be a year, three years, five years from now in terms of like accelerated learning and growth and what can I provide? So breaking that down so everyone can kind of understand some of that first. So for time management, I really look at, you know, how does the entire week look and how can I plan that I'm not only prioritizing client work, I'm also prioritizing individual growth. For me, yeah. that, that you know, coincides with big picture. So I love strategy development. I, I really love just business in general. And for me, I get the most value out of reading books. And I always try to prioritize when I can in the morning just reading, even if it's like five to 15 pages, it always inspires me to think about something. Just like, oh, you know, a, a thought. And I, I joke around with my wife all the time about Game of Thrones. We're rewatching the second season. And, mm -hmm. and Tyrion, you know, the reason why Tyrion is so valuable is because he read a lot. And he understood so many different uh, strategies to war and what happened in the past. And he was able to implement that, and that's why everyone wanted Tyrion by their side at the end. So I think using that sh that type of mentality, like, hey, look, I need to accelerate learning. I need to read. I need to understand how can I personally get better. And then if you're implementing that on a daily basis, what does that look like for you three years from now? And I guarantee you, it's mm -hmm. it's going to be a, a beautiful picture. Right. You know, personal development, you get compound interest on it for sure. So you know, one percent better per week like is a massive change over the course of a year. And I think it's important for anyone thinking about Amazon marketing, Amazon growth to spend some time just straight up business books uh, because you will learn things that you won't if you're only looking at a spreadsheet. So in terms of time management, is there anything that you found that has worked well, like any lesson that has, that you learned like outside of a PVC context that you are able to use in like Amazon marketing, like working with clients? Uh, yeah, so I use a, a tool called Notion and mm -hmm. um, I love it. It's just the the UX experience, you know, when, when I'm able to visually see and organize all the tasks that I need to get done, what's the goal for the account, what's my daily goal for, you know, and the weekly goal and separate that by client and then post that also in a career development. I love the tool. I used to use Trello as well as in like an organizational mm -hmm. tool, but I've graduated to Notion and just really love it. Are you saying that you have a person, like your own Notion for yourself that's outside of your peers tenuity yeah absolutely yeah i think i also do the exact same thing like we have we use clickup at ad badger but i still have my own clickup that i use just for myself um to keep track of my own things which i think is a imp super important thing because like you'll have like shared project management tools with peers but i think people miss out on a lot if they don't have their own place to like log their thoughts and you know write down quick things to do that are popping up in their head throughout the day you definitely need a repository to, to keep track of those things for exactly sure. hey like like jay-z said he said i'm not a businessman i'm a business man you know what i mean yes. so don't <laughs> don't ignore yourself you know you're, you're just as important as, a, as your clients so you need to invest in yourself mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. How about a book recommendation in terms of what what has been an impactful book that you've checked out in the last you know twelve months? So right now I'm reading Blue Ocean Strategy. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's so good. So so far I'm like halfway through the book, but they talk about painting a strategy strategy canvas, and that's where I'm at right now, and I love that. And it says, you know, we are a data performance company in this particular you know through Tenuity, but it says like, hey, take a step back. Let's look at what are the competitive factors for your business and, and your competitors alike and map it out. You know, where where do you fall short? Where do you maximize the value? And what can you do to pivot and change? And also the, the whole thesis of the book is, hey, we're all competing in red oceans, like bloody waters, everyone's competing. Mm -hmm. Where can you find a blue ocean? And by that, what they mean is, I love when they provide this example of circus delay, right? So circuses typically, 
there were a lower price point. There were a lot of like overheads where it was expensive to, to move, you know, from place to place. And Circus Delay changed that. They created a blue ocean, a new market opportunity. They had a higher price point, a different entertainment experience. You're sitting in a theater, right? <laughs> Completely mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. experience, right? And I love that way of thinking. It's just, you know, we, even in advertising, we're like, okay, you think to yourself, am I limited by sponsored ads, right? I can only run sponsored products, sponsored brand, sponsored brand video, sponsored display, go DSP next level, right? But you're not, right? You you have to think about what is my, what is my strategy for the business? What value do we provide and how can I leverage that in certain areas that my, my competitors are not? So definitely Blue Ocean strategy uh, is, is one that I'm working through right now and recommend for everyone. You know, Tenuity does an exceptional job of that. Like you go to Tenuity's website. It doesn't say like, hey, we do Amazon ads optimization. It's like we are brand performance accelerators. You know, create your own category. Uh, Excellent. Dude, I love it. I love that, you know, you're tapping into that kind of knowledge. I'm sure it makes it makes conversations with clients and peers so much more uh, effective having a strong business background as well and having this like business knowledge and business skills. Awesome. Uh, hopefully people listening aren't sort of inspired if they've just only focused on Amazon advertising skills, like to also extend out to overall business skills. Cause I think like uh, what we, sometimes we forget is that, you know, yes, it's Amazon advertising, which is a subset of Amazon marketing, which is a subset of, you know, Amazon growth and management and then which is a subset of e-commerce and you know marketplace e-commerce which is a subset of b2b service marketing and i think like when you start to say like okay i and like which is b2b service marketing is a subset of just overall business and when you sort of view it like that like any knowledge in any one of those categories helps you do your day-to-day so i think keeping things into perspective thinking big uh is so valuable um David, I love it. We've got to talk about PPC, talked about some new strategies, got to talk a little bit big picture stuff, some tips there, some tools to share. This is a good one. Uh, Super thankful for you coming on the show and sharing this. Uh, I think we created some gold today. Really good stuff. Awesome. I love it, man. Love the show. I'm a big fan. Always will be. Right on. Well, it's great having you as a listener and as a guest co-host today. Thank you so much. Give my regards to Liam. Uh, I hope he enjoys this episode too. Awesome, man. Definitely. I'll I'll let him him know about the show, let him watch it, and we'll see what we can do about this new brand. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Have a good one, David. Thank you, you brother. Take care.